صلوا على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أأمنتم من في السماء فبكم الأرض فإذا هي تمور أم أمنتم من في السماء فستعلمون كيف نذير فستعلمون كيف نذير ولقد كذب الذين من قبلهم فكيف كان نكير أولم يروا إلى الطير فوقهم صافات ويقبض ما يمسكهن إلا الرحمن إنه بكل شيء بصير أمن هذا الذي هو جند لكم ينصركم من دون الرحمن إن الكافرون إلا في أمن هذا الذي يرزقكم إن أمسك رزقه بل لجوا في عتو أَفَمَنْ يَمْشِي مُكِبًّا عَلَى وَجْهِهِ
قل هو الذي أنشأكم وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة قليلا ما تشكرون قل هو الذي ذرأكم في الأرض وإليه تحشرون ويقولون متى هذا الوعد ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين قل إنما العلم عند الله قل إن ما العلم عند الله وإنما أنا نذير مبين فلم سيئت وجوه الذين كفروا وقيل هذا الذي كنتم به تدعون قل أرأيتم إن أهلكني الله ومن معي أو رحمنا فمن يجير الكافرين من عذاب الرحمن آمنا به قل هو الرحمن آمنا به وعليه توكلنا فستعلمون من هو في ضلال مبين قل أرأيتم إن أصبح ما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نون والقلم وما يسطرون ما أنت بنعمة رب بك بمجنون وإن لك لأجرا غير ممنون 
وإنك لعلى خلوق عظيم فستبصر ويبصرون بأيكم المفتون إن رب ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمهتدين صدق الله العلي العظيم رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة تسبق الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد Sent Sayyid Ahmed for this beautiful recitation. Let's give him another loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Inshallah, we will continue with this three day program with the lecture of our dear brother Hajjul Al Mughniya about the commemoration, not just of Al Arba'in, but the commemorating of the issues and the matters of the Ahlul Bayt and its importance. Again, I'd like to remind you that this program will continue with a lecture, a majlis, followed by jama'a prayer, congregational prayer, as well as after that, the mawakib that will be outside, that will be serving food, drinks, in remembrance and commemoration of Imam al Hussein, and as a symbol of what happens usually on the walk of Arba'in, the walk of love in the land of Iraq and the country of Iraq towards Imam al Hussein how the servants of Imam al Hussein, the lovers of Imam al Hussein, offer everything that they have for the visitors of Imam al Hussein. And so we try to uh, live by their example and having it, something that resembles that in our gatherings, inshallah. So inshallah, we'll all uh, seek the blessings of uh, this thawab, this, this commemoration of Imam al Hussein after the congregational prayer. Now, let's all welcome our dear brother Hajjal al Mughniya with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد الله صل على وعلى آل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية سيد ومولاي علي بن أبي طالب والحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, we ask Allah to send his greatest peace and blessings once again upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad We praise Allah for all the blessings He has given us and the greatest blessing being that He allowed us to be of the ones who remain steadfast, dedicated, and loyal in the path of our Master after the Prophet, the Commander of the Faithful, the Prince of the Believers, the Protector of the Prophet and His Message, the Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. We praise Allah for this blessing and every blessing, for without Allah we would have nothing. Assalamu alaikum, my dear respected elders, my dear respected brothers, my dear respected sisters, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The commemoration of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam 
and all of the things that it does for us, if we had to put aside all of the glorious things that we can celebrate in the commemoration of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, all of the glorious things, all of the blessings, all of the grace, everything that we can say that comes from Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, the most important of them all is to recognize that all that we have in blessings comes through Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And I'm going to repeat that. أعيد الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد Out of all of the blessings and the grace and the things that you can think of that we get from Imam Al-Husayn alayhi salam the greatest of them all is acknowledging and realizing that everything that we have comes through the blessings of Imam Al-Husayn alayhi salam so whether it be our scholars of old, contemporary and in the past in history, when scholar after scholar and jurist after jurist and martyr after martyr and sacrifice after sacrifice throughout all of the ages point to one thing. Everything that we have is from the blessing of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. So you and I, if we want to make this life worthwhile and we want our children to move forward on a better footing, you ask any parent, it doesn't matter what religion or culture or faith or creed they come from, every parent wants their child to be better off than they were. Who here is a parent? MashaAllah. All the parents in the crowd, who wants your children? Who here wants your children? Some of you in the crowd, you may not be a parent, but you have some of the responsibilities of parents. I see some of you in the back. Who here wants for your children, your siblings, those who are younger than you, that you care for, you want them to be better off than you? Okay. So you ready? I'm going to be kind of blunt tonight. Is that okay with everyone? Beautiful. You and I may complain, may make excuses for why we have the challenges of today. Why are we faced with the issues that we face? Why is there an identity crisis in our community? Why is it that we have a lack of faith in our community. And by the way, when I say our community, this isn't reserved for Dearborn, Michigan, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Canton. You guys are so far away in Canton. Just joking. All of us here, here and abroad, the challenges that we face today are not limited to a geographic area. And it's not the problems of the West. Because if you talk to some people, if you have people at home in the East, wherever that may be, you will find that many of the challenges we have are so similar. If you look at the core of it, the challenges like we've discussed in the previous nights, I'm trying to build on what we've been talking about in the past two nights. The challenges will remain, but the blessings will also remain. It comes down to you a decision that you and I have to take. What lifestyle, what home, are you designing for your family? Enough of pointing the blame and saying, my community doesn't provide for me in this, this, and that. My center doesn't provide for me. The organizations don't provide for me. My neighborhood doesn't provide for me. I can't afford to put my children in Islamic school. These just sound like excuses. You and I, no matter what our means, Allah knows our means. And Allah is testing us considering the means that we have. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not test us beyond our means. He knows what you have. He gave it to you and He's testing you with it 
and through it. So within our means and within our context, what are we doing differently for our children? What are we doing differently for those who are looking towards us? And when we make mistakes and we realize we made a mistake, do we have the humility to admit that we made a mistake? Brothers and sisters, tonight, I want you to be able to, in the love of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, because if there's one thing for certain, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam loves you beyond your comprehension. And when I say your comprehension, behind my comprehension. Beyond it. When it's narrated that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, as a young boy, when he was asked by Rasulullah, what will you do for those? who will commemorate you, mourn you, cry over you after your tragedy, Ya Hussein. Because Allah will create for you, Ya Hussein, Shia, followers, lovers, muhabbin. Ya Aba Abdullah, Ya Hussein, my grandson, my son Hussein, what will you do for them? He says, whoever remembers me, I will remember him. Whoever visits me, I will visit him. I will never leave them. And I will be with them. The narration says three different circumstances that Imam al Hussein salam guarantees that he will be with the believer that mourns him, that remembers him, his followers. I will be with them in the hour of their death when their soul is being taken from their body and in their grave. If you and I are to take a very serious reflection, perhaps the scariest time for us is going to be those three circumstances. The hour of our death, when our soul is being taken from our body and in our grave. There is no loneliness like those three circumstances. None like it. None like it to be compared. Imam al Hussein is telling you you're my lover, you're my admirer, you come and you cry for me, you come and you remember me. When my tragedy will be that lonely tragedy on the day of Ashura, why? My brothers and sisters, listen closely. If you're coming to the majlis of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, this is it. If you take away anything, it's the guarantees from Imam al Hussein alayhi salam what he's going to do for you for coming here for him. The loneliness of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura, which the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, narrated to his mother Fatima, his father Ali, his brother Al Hassan, and to him Hussein at this age. In the last year of the Prophet's life, when Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was only about five, six years of age. The tragedy was told by the Prophet before anyone. If anybody mourned the Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and started the tradition, the sunnah of mourning and crying over Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, was the Holy Prophet himself. So when Imam al Hussein is responding to his grandfather, and we'll, we'll make this part of the majlis tonight, just so that we can especially shed some tears. An honor of Rasulullah, who next week, by the way, just for those who would like to know, next week, on Thursday, I believe, will mark the wafat, the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So these, this commemoration continues, continues. The crux of this hadith is the expression of love. Because Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, through his love, you and I can realize why are we here? Why are we here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran that He didn't create us except to worship Him. I want you to contemplate on that just for a moment, just for a quick moment, and realize this idea. All of this ultimately goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anything in your life is a pointer to anything other than Allah, 
But no, it's not worth it. And remember, the struggle is daily. The struggle is alive and well. You will struggle wherever you go. You will even struggle in places that you came to perhaps to shield yourself from a struggle. But there are two things that will never leave us. Two challengers that will never leave us. But I'll meet you with what will never leave us as well in meeting that challenge every single day. That challenger every single day. You and I have a nafs, a self, a soul. And part of that soul, part of that self is one that is insistent on doing things that are simply based on whim and desire. I want, I want, I want. Pulling us away from our highest self. That self that is just insistent. Go for it, do it. What do you want? No worries, just go, do it. It feels good, it sounds good. Even convincing us God is merciful, don't worry about it, you're young, just go, just do it. It's okay. That will always be there for us as a challenger. And coupled with that nafs will also be someone who you and I need to get to know a little bit better. Someone who challenged us from the day of our conception in our lineage with our father Adam alayhi salam. Someone who could not stand the thought of us being. Someone who made it his life's mission and even though it would cost him his eternal damnation, he made it his life's mission to challenge us and to take us down. I think you know who I'm talking about. The one who we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time we take this holy Quran and before we begin in God's name, we usually start with a prayer. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم I seek refuge with Allah, with God from Satan. Now my dear brothers and sisters, you and I this battle that we're facing, this challenge that we're facing is especially a more difficult one because you can't see your enemy. You can't see your challenger. He's interwoven in our lifestyle. He's interwoven in our daily lives. He's interwoven even with this self that is insistent. You and I, sometimes we welcome the enemy. I'm not talking about an external force pointing at some type of system that is here in the world today. I am talking about something that is as old as our lineage and even farther back. When Satan, Iblis, was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was at the level of the angels, not an angel himself, but he was at the status of angels, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah ordered him with the angels to prostrate before Adam. He said, no. No. What was the sin of Satan that took him to eternal damnation, falling out of the grace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then making it his mission and asking Allah, You've ousted me from your grace. Allow me to show you that I am better than this creation, Adam. I want you and I tonight to take it personally. To take it personally. 
that with shaitan, with iblis, with Satan, he's been challenging our forefathers for ages. Our prophet, our forefather, our ancestor Adam, we are the sons and daughters of Adam alayhi salam. He looked at Adam and he said, I'm better than him. Every single day, you and I, we are challenged in the most subtle of ways by Satan. And I'm not here to scare everybody. This is just the reality from the Holy Quran, from Surah Al Baqarah on. From Surah Al Baqarah on, you have this revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, beware of your enemy, of Iblis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. But you and I, we forget. And we think that the suggestions that are coming from Satan, in reality, when they're coming from Iblis, we think they're just creativity of ourselves and thinking that you and I, we're just going to be free. We're just trying to free ourselves and live our lives. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to live your life. But how? But how? You know what's amazing? Is that this right in front of us, right here. This right here. Everyone looking? Everyone take, everyone that's on their phone right now, take a second to look up. Just for a moment. And then you can go back to your phone. I'm sure you're just taking notes. Right? See this right here? This is not Satan. This is not Satan. This is not your enemy. But it could be a tool of your enemy. It could be a tool of Satan. And at the same time, it could be a tool of the angels. It could be a tool of the message. It could be a tool to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The problem is not in the things that we have in our lives. The problem is in how we use it and our mindset when it comes to it. And realizing what's at stake. And the first thing that you and I need to realize in that relationship and identifying ourselves with this enemy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us he is a clear enemy to you so beware of him is know his first sin what was the sin of Iblis arrogance arrogance Iblis said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no. What? Iblis. Some narrations say that one of the single prostrations of Iblis was 3,000 years long. Oh, he was a worshiper. But was he worshiping Allah or was he worshiping his ego? You and I in our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we conduct our lives, all of the good, all of the virtue, may Allah bless you and give you strength to serve and worship as you do. But check yourself, what are you worshiping? Do you worship Allah as He wishes or do you worship for a feeling? Do you worship for a thought? Do you worship for a status? Do you worship for your ego? How many of us have thought, have expressed, have contemplated, I'm not feeling my prayer today, this week, this month, the past few months. I'm not, I'm not feeling connected to my prayer. I'm not feeling it. Now this next question, don't raise your hand. And how many of us have either stopped praying or contemplated Stopping praying because I'm not feeling connected anymore. What's the use? Think about this. The warning here is what? One, Satan is really playing with you now. See these thoughts? I'm not feeling connected. Maybe I should stop. What's going on here? What's going on? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, pray. And we don't. Why? I'm not feeling it. Are you worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or are you worshipping a feeling? I'm not feeling spiritual. 
my dear brother, my dear sister, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not ordain for us to come to worship for a feeling. He created us for worship. And that worship is what? A lifestyle. Going towards certainty. Going towards the truth. Going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And following Him. When you're feeling it or when you're not feeling it. When you're tired and you're not tired. When you're encouraged and you're engaged and you're motivated. Or you have no motivation at all. Pray. Fast. Stay away from the sin. Give. Even if it's little. But don't stop because you're not feeling it. That's the first trap. It's not a feeling that we're going after. We are going after whatever it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. So when Adam was brought forth to the angels and Iblis was amongst them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bow before Adam, prostrate before Adam. They all prostrated except Iblis. Why do you not prostrate O oh, Iblis? You have created him from clay, from dirt, and you created me from fire, and fire is better than clay. I will not prostrate before something that is less than me. Arrogance is not hard to fall into. Arrogance is not hard to fall into. You may look at someone and just have a passing thought, I'm better than him. I'm better than her. Why is she in this position? Why is she being given this opportunity? Why is she more liked than I am? Why does she get more attention? Why does he have more recognition? Why does he have a better position than I do? Why are things going better for him than they are for me? I'm better. I work harder. I show up more. He barely does anything and he gets everything that he wants. I'm better than him. No, you're not. No, you're not. And the mere thought of that, as soon as you see it, as soon as you feel it, even if you didn't articulate it, as soon as it comes out, no. Check yourself. Because the Holy Prophet ﷺ told us, anyone with an atom's worth of arrogance will be deprived of heaven. An Adam's worth of arrogance. Deprived of heaven. It doesn't matter if you prostrated for 3,000 years. You will fall from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are arrogant. My dear brothers and sisters, tonight in the love of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, please, I want you to humble yourself and realize that everyone here is a lover of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. I am not better than you, and you're not better than me. We are all equals, striving. On the path of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, trying to find salvation through him. So please, if you have anything in your heart that resembles anything like arrogance or wrongful pride, ask Allah for forgiveness and remind yourself of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and all that he sacrificed so you and I can realize his love. Because trust me, the arrogant will not. The arrogant will be deprived. Now, that established us recognizing the enmity of Satan towards us, his sin of arrogance that we will not fall to. Now I want you to see the other side of the spectrum. I want you to see something very clearly. 
you and I may deprive ourselves of our growth and our development towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of our connection to Imam al Hussein. My brothers may feel, I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not quote unquote religious. I still do all of these bad things. I'm not straight enough for this. My sisters may challenge themselves and say, I'm not ready for the hijab. I'm not worthy of it. Someone may say, I'm not ready to go to hajj. I'm not ready to go to ziyara. I'm not ready to live this lifestyle because I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. We checked ourselves on the arrogance. Now let's check ourselves on the worthiness. Allah gives you your worthiness. As soon as you say, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you know who's at play again? The same enemy. Satan. Iblis. He's at work again. You see what he does to us? He will take us to arrogance. I am better than him. I am better than her. And then he'll take us to the other extreme. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of love. So I stay in that same abusive relationship. I'm not worthy of respect. So I allow my family and my friends to continue to trample upon my honor. I'm not worthy of honor. So I won't cover myself with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to me as my crown, my hijab. I'm not worthy of honor. So I'll continue to go to the same filthy places, physically and virtually. Satan's at play again. And he's wiping the floor with us, day in and day out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us our worthiness. You're not good enough. Stop lying to yourself. You're more than good enough. You are more than worthy because you have a Lord who will never leave you, has never left you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awaits you, waits for you, looks at you, blesses you, graces you, gives you, forgives you, has his gates open, wide open for you, every single day, every single night, waiting, come back to me, come back to me, come back to me. And he loves you so much that he gave you 124,000 prophets, the last of them being the first being Adam, who he made his angels prostrate to. And the last of them being Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the best of his creations. And from Muhammad, he gave you Ahlul Bayt. Lady Fatima and 12 princes, the first of them Ali, the second of them Al-Hasan, the third al Hussein, and the last of them our living Imam Al-Mahdi. He loves you. Left and right you may turn in your life and you may feel lost. But I want you to know something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never leave you. Never. It's impossible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us reminder after reminder. Gives us opportunity after opportunity. But it's still our choice. Because with all of the great things that humanity can do, look at all of the atrocious things that it has done. But the reality is it's still in that choice. And that is the beauty and the burden of humanity. That choice. So what do you choose tonight? What do you choose tonight and every single night and forever on? What do you choose? 
And even if you have an inkling of inspiration here tonight, I want you to realize that you and I will fall again. Even tonight, if you come here tonight and Imam al Hussein inspires you, moves you, motivates you, I guarantee you, you will fall again. I will fall again. But how do we pick ourselves back up and realize that I go back to one whom everything comes from and everything goes to? In Surah Al-Isra, we read a verse from Surah Al-Isra yesterday. I'm going to read you another verse or mention another verse in Surah Al-Isra. Chapter 17. In this verse, verse 80. It's a prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking Allah, let it be wherever I go, let my entry be an entry, a gate of truth and honor. And let it be wherever I depart, let it be through that same gate of truth and honor. Truth and honor. Can we commit ourselves in the memory of Imam al Hussein salam, this being the last of the three majalis that we've recited, that we've brought forth in honor of him, in honor of his 40th? Can it be where you and I were going to make? Let's not make inches of change towards Imam al Hussein salam. Let's take big leaps, big leaps of faith with Imam al Hussein salam. Because if Imam al Hussein salam, for a thousand four hundred years, his memory stays. This miracle of Al Hussein alayhi salam that millions go towards him. You and I better hold on to that, latch on to that. So that not just for the rest of our lives, our descendants, our descendants will pray for us our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and our lineage after us from the challenge of Satan to Adam. The challenge continues today. The battle continues today. It's a battle within. How are you setting up your lineage for success? Let's not just think about ourselves. Let's be a little selfless here tonight. Because Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he taught us what it meant to be selfless, giving everything to save others. A hundred years ago, our great grandparents, they probably would have never imagined that their grandchildren would be on the other side of the world, in the Western Hemisphere. And if they thought they would be in the Western Hemisphere, they probably would have thought they would no longer be Muslim. They would no longer be Shia. They would no longer be holding on to their faith. But we're here. We are very Muslim. We are very Shia. And we hold on to our faith for dear life. Will you continue to set that? Set that up for success for your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and your lineage. It starts with the choices that you make here tonight in honor of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. My dear brothers and sisters, to share in the blessings as we've been doing in the past couple nights, let's take ourselves back to the land of Karbala. to the lands of the prophets and the imams. And bear with me as I go from tragedy to tragedy before the time of prayer commences. And if we can dim the lights so that we can all focus, close our eyes, imagine the scene with me. Allow your hearts to experience the tragedy that was experienced by the best of Allah's creation. 
If I tell you this tale of sorrow, will you lend me your hearts to borrow? Will you shed a tear for Hussein? Will you remember Zainab's pain? If I tell you this tale of sorrow, will you lend me your hearts to borrow? Will you shed a tear for Hussein? Will you remember Zainab's pain? If we stay here tonight until tomorrow, will you bear this tale of sorrow? Listen here to Hussein's story, a story of heartache and glory. A story of heartache and glory. When the Imam is sajjad and Lady Zainab would take the women and the children back to the land of Karbala. Before they arrived, there was a companion of Rasulullah. His name was Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari. Jabir was an old man. He was a companion of the Prophet. Imagine 50 years prior, the Holy Prophet had promised him. O oh, Jabir, you will survive me. O oh, Jabir, you're a young man now, but you will live until an old age. O oh, Jabir, you will survive to see my grandson, to see his grave. So in Jabir, heard of the news that Imam al Hussein was martyred and massacred in Karbala. This elderly man, he made his journey to the land of the slaughter, the land of the massacre, the land of tragedy. They say Jabir was helped by his young servant, Atiyah, who had helped him on his journey to Karbala. When they arrived in Karbala, Atiyah told him, O oh, Jabir, I see the graves of your beloved Hussein and his brothers and his champions, the fallen warriors of Karbala. He tells him, Atiyah, take me to the grave of Hussein, Hussein. They say that Jabir would sit next to the grave of Imam al Hussein, crying his eyes out. He would tell al Imam al Hussein, Oh, my beloved Hussein, I've waited so long to see you. I've took so many steps towards you, and now I find you below the ground. I find that the dirt is covering your body. Oh, Master Hussein, why is it that I call your name and you don't answer me? But it's okay, because how could you answer me when they beheaded you and slaughtered you, my master Hussein? I've heard that they killed you lonely and estranged, thirsty. 
oppressed in this strange land, Master Hussein. As Jabir continues to recite a majlis of his own over the grave of Imam al Hussein, Atiyah tells him, Oh, Master Jabir, it seems like there's people coming from the distance. I fear that it's the Umayyads. I fear it's their army coming back to the land of Karbala. So Jabir tells him, Let's hide behind this boulder until they pass, until they leave. But as the people came closer and closer, Atiyah says, I think it's someone else. He said, who do you think that it is? He waits as they come closer. He tells him, oh, Master Jabir, that is... Ali ibn al Husayn, that is Lady Zainab. Those are the women and the children coming towards us. They say that Jabir uh, hurries towards Al Imam al Sajjad. Uh, Al Imam al Sajjad, as he sees Jabir coming towards him, he says, Jabir, is that you? He says, My master Ali. It is I coming to see the grave of your father, Hussein. Why have you returned to this place? Why have you returned to Karbala? Al Imam al Sajjad tells him, O oh, Jabir, we've come to visit the grave of my father, Hussein, to bid him farewell once again. Before we return home to Medina, Jabin tells him, Oh Imam, tell me what happened. Tell me what did you witness on the day of Ashura? Tell me what happened to your father Hussein. And Imam al Sajjad would tell him, O oh Jabir, on the day of Ashura, the companions of my father gave their lives and they fell one by one. Dozens of them gave their lives for my father. My father walked amongst their bodies, calling their names, Habib, Zuhair, Burair, Habis. Oh, my champions, why is it that I call you and you do not respond? O oh, Jabir, my father stood with no friends, but then my brother Ali al Akbar would go forward and he would give himself for my father until they cut him down to pieces. As he's crying, as Jabir is crying, and the women and the children are reliving the tragedies of the day of Ashura, Jabir asks him, what else happened on that day? Master Ali, tell me what happened. And Al Imam Ali would tell him about Al Qasim. He would tell him about the sons of Muslim. He would tell him about the sons of Aqil. And he would tell him about Al Abbas. And he would tell him, he would tell him, he would tell him about his baby brother, Abdullah al -Radhi. 
Jabir would say, is it so that they killed men, women, and children on that day? Ali Sajjad, our Imam, would continue to recite the tragedy. He would tell him, oh Jabir, but none of these tragedies would compare to my father Hussein, who would go into the battlefield and be surrounded by the enemy. Hundreds of wounds, hundreds of arrows, hundreds of spears that would strike his body. My father would fall on the sands of Karbala, and the men would continue to taunt him. The men would continue to surround him. In this memory, Al Imam is Sajjad. In this memory, as Al Imam is Sajjad is reciting the tragedy of his father, imagine with me as Zainab would relive what happened on that day. As Zainab was there, running down from the hilltop to the body of Imam al Hussein in his last moments, she would go between the enemies and she would throw herself on the body of Imam al Hussein. And she would tell him, my love Hussein, speak to me. But he would not respond. My brother Hussein, by the right of our grandfather, Rasulullah, speak to me. But he would not respond. My brother Hussein, by the right of my father, Ali, Speak to me, and he would not respond. My brother Hussein, by the right of our mother Fatima, speak to me. Al Imam Al Hussein would tell her, Oh, Zainab. Broken my heart to pieces. Go back to the women and the children. So imagine as Lady Zainab is sitting after 40 days at the grave of Imam al Hussein, telling him by the right of our mother Fatima, speak to me. Speak to me, Ya Hussein. It would be as if Lady Zainab would tell Al Imam Al Hussein, My love, Hussein, I saw you die in Karbala. My love Hussein, I saw you die in Karbala. But today I say that you live forever on Hussein you know I'll never leave leave your side Hussein you know I'll never leave leave your side 
let me die a thousand times before that day. Let me die a thousand times before that day. You and I will never leave, leave Hussein. It would be as if Zainab would tell us on this day, you and I, the lovers of Imam al Hussein, you and I will never leave. Leave Hussein, you and I will never leave. Leave Hussein. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Wa sayalamu alladhina zalamu ayyun qalabin yanqalibun. Wa al-aqibatu lil-muttaqin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala